Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're going to be looking at what I'm calling creating an, a virtual assistant with the help of Canva um, in our Power BI report or, you know, what's actually commonly a dashboard. The, the lines have been blurred there somewhat by, by Power BI. Um, but really we want to add some interactivity and a call to action. Uh, because frequently we provide insights, uh, but there isn't necessarily that call to ac action prompting people to go and do something with those insights. So all I've done is I've taken a snip with the Windows snipping tool and I've loaded this into Canva under edit a design. Now, as this is static, it's just a demonstration. Um, I've taken the backdrop, but what you may want to do is just build some form of shape like I've got here in Power BI or in another tool. Um, and you can align that with uh, any of the elements I'm showcasing. This doesn't need to be a carbon copy, I'm just showcasing what's uh, possible and to take more of a creative step when designing dashboards. Um, so I, I've just typed in worker, I have a person here, a speech mark, and we'll take some arrows here um, and essentially just add some text. And what I'm going to do there is simply just um, export this PNG image and then I'll just add it into the, the Power BI dashboard. From there, we'll add some buttons, um, give people a bit of a choice, we'll add some interactivity, um, we'll format those with some hover effects, and we'll bookmark it um, and align it to one of our uh, existing icons on our dashboard. Okay, so now that we're back in Power BI, we can simply um, click to add this image um, through the image in the insert um, ribbon there. Um, and we can just basically drag this out. It should fit as we took a, a carbon copy before when we uh, used the snipping tool. So what I'm going to do now is just add three buttons, again, that prompt people to actually do something about the insights um, and act on them and, and by that process improve the business. So the first instance, what we can do is just add a button and format it. Um, the default text can just be something like suggest an improvement via Teams. A lot of companies will have, um, you know, Teams ticketing apps. They may be using Power Apps now. It could be anything because essentially all that we would do with the action here is add a URL. Um, so we can change the state um, after we've formatted this correctly so that we then reflect the on hover. And what we can do here is just adjust the padding at the bottom and we will need to drag out the button and make it slightly larger. And then that will mean that when someone hovers over it, not only does the text very slightly change color, we don't want to overwhelm people, um, it will also jump up a little bit. So it's very clear um, where you are on the page. And that's important. It's quite universal in the functionality and what people would expect in other web applications. So we want to make this a bit more sophisticated than maybe your, your typical dashboard. Now we can format these buttons in a similar way. Um, you know, it could be whatever you like. It could be reach out to the sales manager, for example, or we could potentially have um, a, a myriad of other things but here we might say you know view regional figures or whatever that may be and then we can just format these buttons by adding an action and um, within this formatting pane so you see when you click on the button you've got the option to assign an action so we're not going to go into that right now but it could be a web url to the team's ticketing page the power app whatever that may be um, we could have a web URL. We could even include email icons. I've covered this before um, to reach out to a specific member of staff or, or an employee. So we can do all of that. Um, and, and that's just part of the formatting. But yeah, now what we're going to do is we can go into the view and the selection pane. And we just want to group all these items together so that they're easier to find in the future. I'll simply double click to rename that group. So we'll just call it something like, um, you know, virtual assistant elements. 
And then we can add bookmarks. So this bookmark will essentially, well, if I'd clicked this in the right order, it would be the bookmark on. As you can see, I hid this when I was still in the bookmark. So um, with those elements hidden, that can be the basis of the bookmark set to off. I can delete that existing bookmark. So uh, forget that first step there, but I can delete that um, bookmark. And then what I can do is just where the bookmark is off, um, I can just set it to on again. I can um, show the elements from that selection pane and that will work correctly. Um, and then I can assign the bookmark to one of our existing icons. So this essentially provides the functionality to give that extra interactivity and layering to the end user. So it can provide a small tooltip if I like, um, set the action as a bookmark, um, and that will be the bookmark set to on. So when I hover over um, in the service, people wouldn't have to control click, you would in the desktop, and we get those suggested actions. We can populate things further and add a button for navigating off that bookmark. So as usual, if you like the content, like, comment, subscribe and share. And I hope it fostered some creativity and thinking in allowing people to have a call to action and actually act on that.